Let's watch the worst anti-woke YouTube it's channel. It's me, Curtis Connor, 14 Pro Max, here for another video on YouTube.com. Today, we're going to be looking at a video from the anti-woke YouTube channel, Think Before You Sleep. I use anti-woke. Oh, this guy hates me. This I know this guy. This guy was the one who was like talking about Timmy, who I love, by the way, as you guys know. Uh, he was talking about fucking Timmy and he was like using Timmy as an example because uh, he loved It's Timmy. And I was like, I, I was like, I was watching his video and I was like, dude, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I know Timmy, if he knew that you were using him like this, he would fucking. To be fair, everyone hates you. Yes, all the fucking weirdo incels hate me. You're right, which. I mean, oh no, what am I supposed to fucking do? General sense, it's kind of anti-feminist, anti-SJW sort of stuff. This video called How Woke Propaganda Works is a reaction video to a video from Novara Media and it's hosted by Ash Sarkar. I'm just gonna play his video, which plays her video and his reaction. And then I'm gonna talk about what we're seeing. It's gonna be slow, it's gonna be clunky and chunky, but we're gonna have fun with it and we love it. Thank you. Let's go, go. Lately, I've been seeing this thing pop up on social media. We are going to talk about how you can become a traditional wife. Some younger millennials and Zoomers have decided to embrace living la vida casserole, dedicating themselves to cooking, cleaning, and child rearing, while their husbands or boyfriends, I don't know, chop firewood or go to their job in human research. What did he say about Timmy? He just kept using Timmy as an example to justify misogyny. And Timmy actually clapped on him pretty fucking hard when he found out about it. And then the dumbass thought that, like, I actually brainwashed Timmy into feeling that way. Resources. This isn't just about personal choice or individual preferences. It's advancing a right-wing political ideology and dressing it up as a lifestyle. Oh, no. Women doing housework. Child rearing. Right wing. He had an unhinged pose about you? Oh, my God. Oh my god. Oh my lord, dude. What the fuck? Oh my god. He wrote so much. Ay, ay, ay. Traditional. What has this world come to? This is terrible. Somebody please save us from this deeply misogynistic movement where women are choosing to stay home instead of working a job. Ow, ow. Oh, his voice is real bad. I forgot about this shit. Oh. So that's what this video is is like random stock image smug whiny commentary that takes the first 20 seconds of the introduction to a video and does a little bit of a straw man summarizing the trad wife social media phenomenon as women choosing to stay home and work deeply misogynistic movement where women are choosing to stay home instead of working a job it's a classic example of a straw man however i think we can grant some leniency because it's it's a sarcastic kind of like preaching to the choir that already gets what i'm saying sort of thing so let's just keep watching and check it out. Why is this important? Three things. These women are often really young, in their 20s, and they're preaching the values of submitting to a husband to an audience of other young women. Gee, as opposed to what the mainstream left is promoting to young children during family-friendly events? Also, why is submitting to a partner bad if it's done so? I don't actually understand. Like, he literally, he sounds like the biggest fucking goober, dude. It's like, ah, ah, family friendly events. Ha, ha, ha. Like, what the fuck? Oh, my Lord, dude. What does this guy look like? I feel like you'd get flashbanged if you fucking saw what this dude looked like. I just don't understand why people watch this guy. I mean, I guess, like, they agree with him, right? But, like, how the fuck do you not look at that and go, man, this guy kind of sucks? <laughs> like, I need, like, a, like a better youtuber to watch that doesn't sound like the biggest fucking goober oh, by choice ah, this video has 300,000 views and the channel has 700,000 subscribers and this is the level of commentary pure raw unf Streamer reacting to YouTube essays. YouTube reactor. YouTube essays reacting to YouTube essays. Oh my God! What is our content devolved into? Sorry, dude. Go fucking watch television. Oh wait, you can't. Writers are on strike. Suck my dick. Fucking got him, dude. It's like, yeah, dude. This is the platform that you're on that you enjoy, uh, and and you you consume a lot of content on. Okay. 
I want another fallen pair uh, off YouTuber has pulled the transport parachute. I guarantee you won't guess who it is. Well, I did. EDP. Of course he pulled off the, the fucking transport be a parachute, dude. Nice. Except EDP is such a fucking, you know, very clear, very obvious pedophile that like, you know, it, it's a burden to the uh, anti-trans cause, in my opinion. How is he not in jail? I mean, this actually is a perfect representation of the whole, like, we must protect our children fucking move. You know what I mean? All This wave of, of uh, right-wing content creators that are, like, gross, creepy perverts who fucking defend child beauty pageants, who defend fucking child brides, for example, say insanely sus shit. Like, uh, the most fertile a woman is is when she's 16 years old. Like... Those fucking freakazoids are also the same freakazoids who are like, oh, yeah, we got to protect our children from, like, uh, you know, trans people existing. Why even mention him? I mean, some, I clicked on a link. I don't know why you're getting so mad. I'm making a broader point about how fucking right-wing hypocrisy is, is ever-present, uh, especially when... Wait, what? No, found what he looks like? That's not what he looks like. And another example of all they do is projection. Filtered, what about? Every accusation is a confession, you know, that kind of thing. That's Outism straight from the source. He is here referencing the right-wing propaganda movement to frame things like Drag Queen Story Hour as being uh, inherently predatory towards children and turning them trans, hitting them with the trans ray. Part of the problem here is that the audience for this kind of video is so fully bought into right-wing propaganda that an assertion like that can just go fully unchallenged. They listen to Ben Shapiro, they follow libs of TikTok, they see the constant misrepresentation of drag queens and trans people grouping those together because they like to just sort of group them together and how RuPaul is coming to your house to break through your window to hit your child over the head with a hardcover copy of The Giving Tree. It's very scary and very real stuff that's going on. Also, why is submitting to a partner bad if it's done so by choice? You just said a thing with a negative tone without explaining why it's wrong. Particularly when one of the most common things women ask for in a relationship is leadership from men. Source! Can we get a source? Me, when I pull an idea out of thin air, <laughs> the most commonly cited thing that women want is for me to... I love when guys that sound like this talk about what women want. It's like, bro, you don't know what women want. The only thing women have ever wanted is to get the fuck away from you. You know what I mean? Like, fuck you mean. This is what women want. Let me tell you. It's like, no, you don't know including your mom. They've always just tried to get the fuck away from you, so that's the only thing you know about what women want. Go to bed at my bedtime. The woman is my mom, and she represents the thoughts and feelings of women across the globe. Also, he's like, you're using this negative tone without explaining why it's wrong. You're 40 seconds into the video. It, it, the video hasn't started. This is the introduction. <laughs> the points are being listed out, and then they're going to go in detail if you watch the video. All you got to do is watch the video. But this person... Homie... Uh, that is, again, a yet another instance of, like, a fucking, you know, transphobic person could, I think, in my opinion, learn a lot from trans people. Do some gender-affirming voice training, for example. You could literally fix your voice, okay? You could do that. You're, you're like an entertainer, a content creator. You could do that. You know what I mean? It's just something you could do. I, just a suggestion. You know what I mean? person is allergic to pre-watching, which we... Is this Hassan ever reacting to a guy reacting to a guy reacting? Yes, dude. Yes, you fucking nailed it, dude. You nailed it. It's derivative. It's so fucking stupid. It's so uninspired. That's what I do all day, every day. You're the first one to say it in the chat, by the way. Remember that. We love on this channel. We love it when they're contradicted later and then they just don't even bring it up. But maybe he's a mind reader. Let's watch. The trad wife trend doesn't exist in isolation. It's linked to deeply regressive political and social movements such as Christian and white nationalism and anti-feminism. Well, we knew they couldn't make it the whole video without calling someone far right. Ignoring the fact that I bet if you actually surveyed the women who run these trad wife channels, 
None of them listen to Nick Fuentes. Me, when I make stuff up, I, lo I love the way he does that. I bet if you asked these people this thing, they'd say, what I think, because that's, that's how statistics work. Connections can also be more explicit. One mumfluencer called Wife With A Purpose issued a white baby challenge, calling <laughs> on women to have as many white <laughs> babies. Dude, she followed it up very quickly. God damn, that, there you go. That's, a, that's a, a, one of those trad wife influencers directly quoting a white supremacist, white nationalist as possible. This is an idea central to neo-Nazism. I love how showing a Christian nationalist and then a white nationalist is just calling people far right with no basis. They are those things. They are self-proclaimed. You can see it in the It's look at the shirt. Listen to Nick Fuentes anytime he's talking. That's what he is. It's, it's okay to just like live in reality, you know? Hitler was a pedophile and kind of a pagan. It's like, well, he was also really fucking cool. We knew they couldn't make it the whole video without calling someone far right. He also just once again puts words in her mouth. She didn't say that the women that run these Trout Wife accounts listen to Nick Fuentes. She said something different than that, which you can run it back and listen if you want, but it wasn't that. Also, how are Christians regressive? I mean, Muslims have traditional values. Are they regressive too? It's weird that only one religion was mentioned during the entire video. But again, you're just saying things are bad with fucking own, dude. Ash is a Muslim. Why not use this video to also talk about the patriarchal trappings of your religion? Why only Christianity? A great question from this guy. Uh, you kind of answered that fucking question, didn't you? Ash is a Muslim woman who doesn't have traditional values. Hmm. That's really interesting. I, so what? Does she not? Does she not fit the bill for you then? Like, is that what you're doing? Because traditional values is obviously not exclusive to Christianity. Fuck you mean? You're making it seem like uh, there's no, you know, there's no famous trad wives out there uh, that are uh, fucking Muslims or whatever. Like, I'm sure there are. She's currently hyper-focusing on white supremacist trad wives in the Western world where she fucking lives. The video is about trad wives. Why would she bring out Muslims, Lamau? There are some. There are some. There are actually, uh, I've seen it. Like, I've, I've seen some... Uh, like when you when you fall down a fucking crazy uh, rabbit hole, but the idea that he is trying to fucking bring up here is that like, oh well, Muslims are like this all the fucking time. Meanwhile, he's like responding to a Muslim woman who isn't uh, fitting that bill, with no reason why. <sighs> okay, I'm back. Sorry, I had to put on a coat because you know sometimes you're just a chilly boy. He asked the question here: How are Christians? And in my first year of uni, my godmother who adored died of cancer. Suddenly you need to feel that this big woman Entire video. Her. But again, you're just saying things are bad with no reason why. <sighs> okay, I'm back. Sorry, I had to put on a coat because, you know, sometimes you're just a chilly boy. He asked the question here, how are Christians regressive? But that's not what she said. She said that Christian nationalism and anti-feminism are regressive. And those aren't the same thing as Christianity. It's really nice that when he's done making what he thinks is a point, he says, also, also, really makes it easy to debunk each thing he says because they're very, they're separated nice and easy. Bringing up the fact that Ash is a Muslim and finger wagging, well, actually, to an argument she never made. It's goofy behavior. That's what I would call it. Goofy behavior. Preaching to the choir behavior because they won't, they don't care. They aren't intellectually logged in. They are getting mad. This video is making them mad. It's supposed to make them mad and it's succeeding. It's over, it is 99% likes. It's part of a wider shift of young people being dissatisfied with neoliberalism and wanting social change. I have no idea what she just said, so I'm going to go by what the red highlighted text says. I'm uneducated and I'm making that your problem. <laughs> I remember there's some old anti s No, this is like how, this is like old school anti SJW YouTube shit that he's just like repackaging. That's literally what it is. And also, it. Un oh, I, I always repeat this fucking same term over and over again. But yes, in the land of the blind, the one eyed man is king. He knows that the market that he's serving are a bunch of fucking idiots. The people that are scouring the interwebs for like the newest anti SJW propaganda are going to be fucking dum dums. Okay? That's what it is. So, like, that kind of shit bangs for them. They're like, oh, lol, fucking own, dude. Being wordy much, woman, uh, get back in the kitchen. Should that be videos that did the same thing? So, like, most people who grew up immersed in the neoliberal ideology of the West. What? Neoliberal ideology of the West. 
Let's just break that one down for a moment, shall we? Neo, meaning new. Liberal, the idea that the world should be governed on a principle of liberty and equality for all people. And this is supposed to somehow be a bad thing to think. Loudly proclaiming that you don't know what a word means. It's supposed oh! to be like a comedic thing. Like, oh, the woke left is going so far with their terms. I just got like Vietnam flashbacks, dude. I got like fucking PTSD. This just gave me psychic damage. It just like reminded me of how shitty the fucking internet was in 2016. And these fucking dumbasses are trying to bring that back so bad, so fucking desperately. Holy fuck. That was a chatter. No, this this hurt me. I, this is this did crit damage to me. Uh, straight up, I'm fucking done. I'm done. I'm done with that. I can't. It's it, oh my god. He's so fucking smarmy too. He's like, <laughs> let's break this down. Neo liberal. Neo meaning new. It's like ah. Ah! Fuck! That Dear Manosphere idiot is more like 2013, 2015. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like Gamergate. That's It's identical to the kind of fucking commentary that this dude is cutting right now. They're just making words up. When neoliberalism is really a politics 101 concept, at least understanding the basics of the term and what she's trying to say here. It's not, it's not a simple concept, but acting like it's a new thing is, it's silly. You know, it's silly. I have no idea what she just said, so I'm going to go by what the red highlighted text says. A misguided expression of the desire for social change. Again, just one little example of what you're talking about to show why the trend is bad. I understand that this is like an outline of your speech, but at least give me a teaser so if I only watch the intro, I know why this is bad, as opposed to only knowing that this is bad. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Oh my god, he admitted. He's just admitting it. This is responsible content creation 101. It's one thing if you're a viewer and you, you know, need a little bit more context in the introduction to a video, but you're a content creator making a critique. You are critiquing the ideas here, you disagree with them, and you are so lazy that you can't just watch the video first. That's all you have to do. Let's watch the video first. I need a little treat, a little, mm, a little teaser before I can decide if I want to can eat the meal. Surely between calling your opponents far-right extremists and all that expensive and fancy editing, you can afford to do that. But maybe it's not the purpose of a media outlet that clearly bleeds money to be honest about their portrayal of info. And when I say bleeds money, I mean that this 300k sub channel called Novara Media has trouble hitting 50k views on an average video, yet somehow is able to afford a staff of multiple pundits, editors, expensive equipment, and a studio. With all these expenses, there is no way this channel makes money, so clearly someone is paying for this information to be spread. This is where a fun conspiracy begins. He speculates that this channel must be bleeding money, while not mentioning the fact that they have thousands of donors and paying subscribers outside of YouTube. He mentions it- Yeah, literally. Like, I mean, he cracked the code. Another common trope with right-wingers is always describing something that is like normal process, but in a snarky, sneaky, suspicious tone to make it seem like it's weird. Uh, one example that I commonly use is like the concept of a social security number. Uh, here, let me go ahead and explain it to you. For example, you mean to tell me that the government, you want the government to assign a number to you at birth that controls every aspect of your life, that it literally will limit your opportunities to get housing down the line? Sounds like communist China to me, brother. Absolutely fucking lutely not, except I just described to you the concept of social security! Social security numbers! But when I say it like that, in that tone... All of a sudden, you're like, wow, that's really creepy, brother. I don't like that. That seems weird. It's got the word social in it, like socialism. What the fuck's that about? I'm losing my mind. Elon does that same thing with a lot of tech. Yes, it's, it's, what, it's how you like turn something that is like normal that you have taken for granted your entire life into like some big fucking propaganda because you know that the audience is fucking stupid okay they're mentally stunted and you fucking know that or you yourself are mentally stunted and someone else told you that and you're repeating it okay they do this all the fucking time it's so frustrating so frustrating to see i'm like dude well how did you just fear monger a concept like like, social security numbers. Like, how did you do that?
Yeah. Yes, I was on mobile earlier. I was just thinking Elon's just describing normal business practices like tracking new orders. My lord, dude. If you explain braces to someone, it sounds inhumane. Another common tactic, as a matter of fact, when you think about it, another thing that I talk about regularly is when you talk about trans healthcare, when you talk about healthcare in general, you can literally make it sound as gruesome as humanly possible because ultimately open heart surgery means you have a fucking butcher with a a bunch of tools going into your chest, opening up your fucking chest cavity, breaking your ribs in a lot of instances, pulling them back like they're doing Nordic War Eagle style torture on the front of your fucking chest, and then going directly into your fucking heart and cutting it further with some saws. That's what the reality is with heart surgery, okay? It's terrifying. All matter of medical procedures are terrifying when you describe it like that. But no one is out here trying to stop heart surgeries from happening. But that's the way that they describe any kind of like trans medical care. Okay. A lot of times leg surgery, surgeries literally have to hammer rods in the leg bone. Surgeries are metal as fuck. Yeah. It's fucking stupid. It later but you know that's why this claim that they're bleeding money is speculative at best and dishonest at worst also to be clear this is a media organization that is building a youtube presence and just because that youtube presence has yet to become profitable on its own somehow means that there must be secret people behind the scenes pulling the strings this gets really good though here what is novara media who is this presenter ash sarkar well i found this video of her on piers morgan where she says this she's i'm literally a communist <laughs> That's not a shock. But what is a shock is that you can buy jewelry of that quote or t-shirts that say marks on them on the Novara Media website shop. What do you mean? They're socialists and yet they fucking sell commodities? What the fuck? Oh my God, what a novel idea. <laughs> Got them. I bet these communists would probably serve top of the hour ad breaks too. Fucking owned at the top of the hour. I bet they have a contract. I bet they're working under Amazon's umbrella. Ooh, fucking God. I'm at the top of the hour. There's a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, I bet this commie would tell you that you can subscribe voluntarily if you want to. You don't have to. $5 over for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month or by getting gifted a sub. If you're lucky, use the three-minute ad break now. Anyway. shop, which is very capitalist of them. Wait, did that jewelry page say topple and burn? Yep, it did. You can't make this stuff up. A group of communists literally partnered with a company called Topple and Burn, which really just signifies the sort of violent behavior that communists are known for. Uh, I'm willing to bet that Topple and Burn most likely is some like fucking anarchist, uh, cooperatively owned uh, small jewelry store too. Rewatch Ash Curry, the best moment in TV history. Gift box. Like, very, very likely that it's like, uh, it, it's, it's most likely some fucking uh, domestically manufactured uh, co-op uh, that, that they're u using to, to produce the stuff, too. Yeah, I got a 946 finally, dude. Holy shit. It's been a long time. Own for this stuff is just right in your face. You know, he's actually got a point here. Toppling and Burn is a pretty dangerous you know dog whistle. Some I'm of you may recall look. the January 6th protesters decked out in their merch. As soon as you put on the necklace, it makes you storm the White House. It's true. Many many are saying this. Anyway, then I stumbled across their Support Us page where it says, Defy billionaire bat media and back truly independent journalism. I wish I recorded my initial laughter while reading this because I work in this industry and there is no way that they could afford this staff with a small YouTube channel and independent donors. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I work in this industry. You have a YouTube channel, man. You have a you have a YouTube channel. Anyone with a blog is just working in the industry now. <laughs> and look, I get that he's trying to say he has a YouTube channel. It's successful. He understands the rough breakdown of ad revenue and things like that. Still very funny to call having a YouTube channel working in the industry. The industry he doesn't work in, though, is the journalism industry, the one that takes into account. Yeah, uh... Topple and Burn is, uh, is not a cooperatively owned, uh, it's not a cooperatively owned, it doesn't seem like it, they don't say it anywhere, it doesn't seem like it's a cooperatively owned, uh, 
uh, jewelry uh, manufacturer, but they literally use uh, their jewelry to, uh, you know, independently fund and finance uh, causes they care about. A portion of our profits will always go to support the cause we care about. From time to time, 100% of our profits will, uh, from some products will go to our specific causes. There you go. I mean, including, you know, ones that could probably get you in legal trouble in a place like UK, it seems. <sighs> Should be a co-op, though. That shouldn't fly. Got it, Bomb Joe Cartoon. You do that. Okay? You set it up. There is a very famous one on TikTok uh, who I know a bunch of them that work there are Hasanabi heads, but you tell them. Count the donors and speculates on another channel's uh, earnings. Pocket watching. This is called pocket watching. I'm going to skip ahead after this part because he's just do doing a thing where he's just like being kind of mean, I guess. Novara Media wants you to know that they know what the cool kids are into. Mainstream media. Mainstream media sucks. It literally sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing dance moves, Ash. Why, why are you shitting on Ash's dance moves? She's just having a good time in that video. Can't, come on, man. I challenge you, think before you sleep, to post a video of you dancing and see how people on the internet talk about you. Just saying. He uploads a stock image of Aruba bouncing up and down or something. <laughs> what? I'm literally one of the images. I'm dancing. This is me dancing. Now let's go over the numbers. Novara Media boasts that they, at the time of the video, had 200,000 subs and 2.5 million monthly views, which sounds like a lot, but it's not nearly enough to accrue 6,000 donors. I don't know any 200k subscriber channels with anywhere near that number of donors. I get like double their monthly views. I it, it, wow, it sounds like there is a, a different reason for it. Perhaps it warrants further investigation, which you could have done, and then you could have figured it out, and then you would be in the business and like actually doing something worthwhile if your goal, of course, was to inform people. Uh, your goal is not to inform people. It is to simply just sit there and be like, oh, my God, blah, blah, blah. These guys, a uh, uh, shadow donor, George Soros much? Like, that's what his job is here. Which is why, you know. Kaya, Kaya, come here. Kaya, come here. I got treats for you. Yay. Kaya, go to your pen. I have promoted donations in the past on many videos, and I don't even have 200 monthly supporters between Patreon and Subscribestar. <laughs> this is- Hell! This one's so good. This one's so good. I've completely failed at building a Patreon audience, so everyone must also do that. <laughs> Again, the logic here is just bonkers. The reason I'd imagine no one wants to sub to his Patreon is because he's not a particularly entertaining or talented creator. He just shovels the right-wing slop into the audience's mouths. This is modern-day Fox News. They sit there and they watch. They get mad at the source material because it's being misrepresented, of course. And then they go on about their days. Paying extra to hear more of this guy's voice? No thanks. None for me, thanks. I thank you, but none for me, thanks. And I don't even have 200 monthly supporters between Patreon and Subscribestar. I love this dude. He keeps just posting his L's, which is pretty ah. funny. I, I like that. Okay, Kai got a taste of fucking freedom, and she's losing it, dude. Fucking losing it. She was outside playing around, and now she's like, I want to fucking go back to that. What the fuck am I doing here? Inside. Who gave them the exposure to get thousands of donors? You would need monthly views at least in the tens of millions to get that. Go right now to any of the top pages on Patreon. Think before you sleep. I'm talking to you. Maybe you'll respond to this. Maybe you won't. But if you're watching my video, go to the thing and look at the viewership. They, they don't need 10 million. They don't even need a million. It's just you need to just have a good content and a good relationship with the audience. It's harder for you because you do propaganda and they don't care about you. They care about getting mad. That's, that's it. Okay, this is where the real expose begins. Here we go. This is good. Here's where things get more interesting. 
I went to this website here and found that Novara Media partners with a group called the Media Fund, who also partners with a group called Open Democracy. Open Democracy received money from the Ford George Foundation, George. and it also received hundreds of thousands of dollars in 2021 from the Open Society Foundations. Notice what just happened there. He just jumped from one thing to the next thing to the next thing without proving a real connection. Novara Media partners with the Media Fund. The Media Fund partners with Open Democracy. Notice Novara Media doesn't partner with Open Democracy. It's it's a guilt by association. There's a no 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 George Soros. He couldn't possibly fund Novara Media. He had to do it. Uh, by a secondary fund. Intermediary party. D. Party. Also, is George Soros, dog. They fund everything. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's pretty hard. I mean, they don't fund me. Which, by the way, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, George, you're out there if you're watching. I know you're a fan. My check has yet to arrive in the mail. Must have forgotten about me. I don't know what it is. It's weird. But. <clears throat> it'd be cool. Some thank of you, you tinfoilers might already know who runs the Open Society Foundations. Look, for thank you for the thank you for the subs. Let's go to their website. Oh, look, it's billionaire George Soros. I swear when you study this stuff enough, it feels like all paths eventually. I swear if you study this stuff enough like me, a smart guy who studied this stuff. Like, wow, uh, billionaire funding an NGO. That's crazy. Uh, haven't seen that one before. That's crazy. They lead to George Soros. Um, okay. That's <laughs> weird comment there. <laughs> but again, Novara Media is not funded by George Soros. This is full speculation and guilt by association dressed up as investigative journalism. It's, it's horrible. It's hilariously bad. Where this guy's a natural one for his voice. I know. The funniest thing is like, dudes like this spend all their time shitting on the way women look, the way women sound, the way women operate, the way marginalized people should be and shouldn't be, right? And then the moment that you turn it around and be like, bro, says you, look at your fucking voice. Like, look at the way you conduct yourself. Like, carry yourself with a little bit more respect. Holy fuck. They immediately lose their minds. They're like, oh my God, typical violent leftist. He doesn't care. He's such a fucking body shamer. He's such a, such a fucking asshole. He's, a, he's doing frat boy politics. I hate it. It's like, dude, you literally spend your entire life shitting on others. Like, what, you get a little bit of that back on you? You get a little bit of that fucking flung in your direction and you fucking buckle. Like, what is that? It's an ad hominem. Yeah, I am. I'm, I am. I'm fucking not trying to make intelligent commentary here, okay? They're free for all to access, free from ad partnerships, free from paywalls, and free from the influence of the super rich. The founder of Novara Media, this guy here, Aaron Bastani, has also written for the George Soros-funded Open Democracy, and Novara Media did a podcast with Open Democracy's founder as well. So who exactly is funding you again? My favorite tech YouTuber did an interview with Bill Gates, and ever since then, it's all woke 5G vaccine propaganda. Again, trying to prove a link by association. So snarky and smug, and all just so obviously wrong and reaching. Also, according to The Guardian, this group called the Media Fund that Novara Media is a part of has all sorts of regulations, which means not only do they probably have billionaire donors, but they also have a politically driven regulatory organization that they have to adhere to. The National Union of Journalists Code of Conduct, which is to demonstrate a commitment to factual and accurate reporting, and within a year of joining, become fully unionized workplaces. It does say new partners must be approved by existing partners, suggesting that right-wing outlets are unlikely to be selected. But again, does that prove an agenda? No, it doesn't. It shows a general trend of the types of publications that get selected, but the wokeism comes before that selection. They're already woke. There's no one telling them to be woke. Again, I'm using the fuck is this you guys stupid and you're wrong as on I understand that you want to be educational but these kids are broke how the fuck do we include these people so they don't become mass shooters I don't know this person just makes me upset and wants to make fun of them but I don't want them to shoot me I don't know one last try and then I'm gonna focus on my stash no that kid's not gonna shoot anything okay maybe his fan base might but like that kid's not gonna shoot anything he has a fucking successful YouTube channel when you have some level of financial security, you have a lot to lose. This is something that I describe all the fucking time. His material conditions are, are apt and, and not uh, there for like uh, someone who's going to go and, and do violent shit. What do you mean? No, he has 136 Patreon subs, but like he has a lot of fucking uh, YouTube followers, doesn't he? What is the fucking channel? I think, therefore I am. What is the fucking... Name of the dumbass uh, channel? What? Oh, he doesn't put it in there. What the fuck? How woke propaganda works. Lately, I've been seeing this like, thing look. pop up. 
This video has 326,000 uh, views from three years ago. He has 681,000 subscribers. The video that it's shitting on literally has a fraction of that. Okay? Lately, I've... Yeah, 93K views from two months ago. His video has 326,000 views. Uh, it's just like he is absolutely fucking lutely doing uh, well enough. Let's be fucking real, okay? He's doing well. Hello, everyone. It's He's not going to shoot up a school. Get out of here. Be real. Actual and accurate reporting, and within a year of joining, become fully unionized workplaces. It does say... Woke. There's no one telling them to be woke. Again, I'm using woke in the way they... 300k views isn't bad? No, I didn't say that at all. I, I'm actually saying that he has that kid, or adult, I hope he's not an adult, oh my god. That person has purpose in his life, okay? People with purpose in their lives, no matter how bad that purpose might be, I'm just saying he has a purpose. He has found something that he likes, Okay, he has found something that he likes. He enjoys doing, whether it's like right wing uh, screeds, uh, writing the dumbest fucking content on the planet or whatnot. It doesn't really matter. He he found something that he actually likes to do that is making him money. Okay, maybe not the most sustainable uh, industry, but it's still something that he looks forward to. When you have something like that, regardless of how miserable you are in your personal uh, life and how you conduct yourself you're most likely not going to go do a fucking mass shooting, okay? They understand it. To them, it means left-wing, liberal, anything over there. That's what it means. Shout out to little Joel. Hey, booby champs. Okay, so now we're moving forward to the meat and potatoes here, which is the claim about propaganda. The first claim being it's full of straw man arguments. This video from Ash Sarkar. Let's set aside the fact that the video so far has had billions of straw man arguments and just see what he's got to say. More importantly, though, and now that we know who's behind this company, this Tradwife video from Novara Media is an excellent example of using heavy amounts of propaganda to get you to believe a certain narrative without any actual evidence that what they are saying is true. So let's get back to Ash Sarkar and discuss how the propaganda works by first showing you how they only use one-sided straw man arguments. Like with the example of finances, the idea of submission is that by giving up her independence, autonomy, and power, a woman will be taken care of by a good and godly man. She serves him, he serves Christ, but only one person is scrubbing out the toilet. Okay, and only one person is dealing with an asshole boss. Only one person is repairing the stuff that breaks. Only one person is lifting the heavy stuff. Seriously, these feminists love to forget all the traditional male house chores, while at the same time being incredibly demeaning and insulting to men. I'm sorry, but this guy looks like he needs assistance from a much larger dude when opening up a, a, a jar, okay? Like, you can't be talking like this w while you're sounding like that. You know what I mean? He's like, uh-huh, uh, uh, I bet you would need me for help when you need to reach the top shelf. And by that, I mean, of course, I know where the ladder is. I know where the step ladder is. And in their portrayals. You know, the reason Ash describes what the male's role is here as uh, just serving Christ is that historically there is an imbalance. The idea that these traditional gender roles are a one-to-one -one exchange is false. That's why feminists historically have fought for what they've fought for. It's really pedantic to take Ash's outline of this idea and declare it a straw man when it's not even the argument. You're just taking everything she says and breaking it down like it's too much. It's bad. It's dishonest. Like, listen to the next part. The influence of fundamentalist religion extends far beyond whatever private arrangements a couple may have as part of a household. It's also odd that, like, your entire value as a man is what? To open a jar? To fix something in the house? Like, that's kind of reductive, I feel like. You know what I mean? I don't know why you're, like, unironically owning yourself. You know what I mean? Weird. Weird thing. Tradwife culture is dominated by aggressively anti-abortion, anti-birth control, and anti-sex views. Yeah, that's actually a really, really, really good take, too, that I forget to repeat often, which is, I'm so sick of these right-wing freaks talking about masculinity. You make video essays for a living. Yes, you make YouTube essays. Your job is soy, Okay. By default, your job is soy as fuck. It's soy, it's gay, it's not trad, it's not fucking mask. You're a soy boy, okay? You do. 
And I say this as also a soy guy, okay? I'm soy as fuck. Look at me. I'm reacting to YouTube essays. Also soy. Very soy. The only difference is I don't have a fucking issue with being called that, okay? But don't fucking LARP like you're working at the goddamn coal mines every day because you are on the right side of history. Yeah. You are literally closer to a BuzzFeed writer. Oh, absolutely, than a fucking oil field worker. You are a BuzzFeed writer. That's what you are. Dude, I love... Oh, God. I personally love unique commentary that no chatter ever comes up with beforehand. Like this one. I think we need more 33-month subscribers to say exactly the same thing over and over again. You fucking sheep. An anonymous At the start gifter. of the video, he makes the, the point that episode. Ash is declaring traditional gender roles as inherently misogynistic. Somebody please save us from this deeply misogynistic movement where women are choosing to stay home instead of working a job. But here she is very clearly refuting that notion. And look, I'm not saying there's anything inherently degrading about being a mom or making nice meals. I like cooking elaborate dinners. For that matter, my boyfriend does too. Why didn't he delete that part from the beginning of the video? Because he does not care about being honest. That's not the point here. The point here is shovel, 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 shovel. I like cooking elaborate dinners. For that matter, my boyfriend does too. Now you might say it's just a coincidence that she talks about how she can make complex meals while making her boyfriend look stupid. Surely they aren't intentionally trying to make men look bad here. Okay, this is where we get to <laughs> sort of incel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all a plot. She wanted to make her boyfriend look stupid and bad. That's right, dude. Yeah, she wants everyone to look at that video and go, Ash, you fucking idiot. Why are you dating a stupid bad guy? Yeah, or maybe it's like, you know, lighthearted, humorous. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Maybe that's the reason. These guys, they love doing edgy comedy. And then fucking complain when someone even, like, attempts to do something that is a light jab. They turn into the biggest fucking woke scolds on the motherfucking planet, dude. It's the same It's the same as those, like, uh, South Korean fucking weirdo incels that were, like, constantly and consistently talking shit about women. And, like, going to agitate at a fucking feminist rally only to, like, lose their shit and claim that it was sexual harassment. When one person there jokingly said... I think men should take showers. Remember that shit? It's always like that. It's like women this, women that. And then the moment that a woman turns around and goes, hey, how about you take a shower? They're like, what the fuck? That's sexual harassment, ma'am. You're a fucking dweeb, dude. Yeah, getting upset at that clip, making him look bad, shows how unbelievably insecure this guy is behind the screen, which is precisely at the heart of the same fucking commentary, uh, bros, that we talk about all the time. That's why all the fucking Sneeko weirdos, all of the fucking Andrew Tate fanboys love posting photos, still images, that I have chosen to put out there in me in a fucking dress. They're like, dog, you're gay. Look at you in a dress. Own. I'm like, you think that owns me? I put that out there, you fucking idiot. And the irony itself is that I still look more masculine than you ever will be in a fucking dress. Like, that's the hilarious part about it. My titties look fucking sick, dog. You post that shit every time you think you're owning me. Meanwhile, your girlfriend, if you have one, obviously not, most likely not, or like the girl that you have a crush on sees that pose and goes, damn, that dude's fucking hot. Okay? It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. I got titty meat, motherfucker. You saw that shit? You saw how good I looked and you still chose to post that. I posted that myself. I don't get it. I find it really odd when people are just like, huh, let's, let's post the thing that he voluntarily published on the internet that got, that, that got millions of fucking views on TikTok. 
couple of vibes from this guy. She plays a clip of him, you know, being silly with the whisker. And he's like, you're making him look so stupid. How could you do this? He must be so embarrassed that his girl is making him look like a cuck. But it's like, bro, it's a silly clip. It's a silly clip. An example of him making an elaborate dinner and being a little silly while he does it. What? How does that? What? How is that her making him look bad? It's just funny. At. <laughs> Super triggered and sensitive at the slightest hint that a guy is being poked fun at. And he's not even being poked fun at. They're dating. It's fine. It's funny. Chill the fuck. Oh. Though the idea of women being confined to the home while men do things like go outside and work isn't exactly new. Is there any comparative description here that doesn't attempt to make men look like crap? Women are confined to the home while men can just do whatever they want. This is like the fucking neck bearded losers who tried to say like the Mario movie is woke because they try to make Mario look stupid. They want to make men look stupid. It's like it's just a regular fucking almost played out cliche character trope, dude. It's not that serious. You're reading into it. Oh my God. Are you okay? Take lithium. Take your lithium. They want. Maybe they go outside and work or maybe they won't. This video has BuzzFeed levels of self-awareness. She didn't say men can do whatever they want. She said men are working. Somehow he has managed to get lazier than he already was by just completely not listening to a five second clip. It's a five second clip, man. You could easily flip this and say that men are forced to do the will of a boss all day while a woman gets to stay home watching soap operas and doing whatever she wants. Men going outside and going to work, which is what she said, while men do things like go outside and work, is in the inverse summarized as women staying home and watching soap operas all day. I bet if women actually gave men a choice to stay at home versus work for some boss they don't like or for rude customers, a giant portion of them would gladly not go to work. So here he's being an- Wait, what? Okay. Yeah. That's- Wait, why are you- What? Wait, that's so strange. Okay, that's a good point. Uh, but then wouldn't you call them pussies or whatever because they're not like abiding by gender norms even though you yourself are doing, once again, as I pointed out earlier, a very soy thing like YouTube essays? an accidental feminist by promoting the concept of a stay-at-home dad. The anti-feminist framing is, being a stay-at-home mom is better for you, actually. It's easier and better for you, and you like it. When the feminist framing is, you can be a stay-at-home mom, we have no problem with that. All we're saying is that you should have the right and autonomy to choose. Very simple, very simple. Oftentimes I hear, and keep in mind, this isn't data or anything, this is just anecdotal. Could have a lot to do with the selection bias and the, you know, the yep. people who wind up in my office. Um, but that it's kind of completely acceptable to a lot of my male patients that they have a partner that doesn't earn money and that a homemaker is like a laudable position. But f women that, that I have as patients don't really feel the same way. They're actually very few. Random clip of Dr. K, which he prefaces by saying this is anecdotal. Keep in mind, this isn't data or anything. This is just anecdotal. Love that. Love that. This guy hates data. He hates it. Just listen to how much he hates it. Listen to what he says next. They're actually very few. Yes, as far as I can see, including huh. the many examples of women's testimony that I provided on this channel, the reason that house husbands are almost non-existent. Dude, I love that. The, re the, the many testimonies from women I've provided on this channel. What the fuck are you saying? I think we've definitely established that this man has never been around a woman. Like, he, he crawled out of his mother's vagina, and that's the last time he had any contact with a female person. You know what I mean? That's like is because women generally don't want a man who stays home. They want a guy who makes more money than they do, whether they are politically on the left or the right. This is all compounded by another one-sided feminist lie, which is that housework is unpaid. As far as I can see... In yeah, I love that. I, I Wait, first of all, he's like, okay, okay, Karl Marx, for the record, by the way. Uh, okay, Mr. Marx. What, what was that? Yeah. Yeah, doing chores in the house and like... Rearing children is quite literally unpaid labor, uh, which is kind of Marxist of him to bring up. What the fuck? Including the many examples from my channel, which definitely doesn't have a particular agenda involved. Definitely not. Definitely not. Editor Noah, just go ahead and scroll through what the types of videos he makes and the types of agendas of the people he presents are made out to be. Okay, I got somewhere to be. It's getting dark. I'm maybe going to finish the rest of this video later. We are nine minutes in of a 30-minute video, and this video must be jumping up to the...